morning ladies and germs. Uh, today we have a, um, a tablet. That's an Asus. No, this is the K00B model. It's a, it's a Mimo pad. It's like this. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take it apart and uh, see if we can get the, uh, the USB the micro USB connector uh, replaced on it and uh, do some preliminary tests on it. Uh, uh, see if it'll fire up, if we can get it to charge, uh, stuff like that. And just see what's going on with it. Uh, my friend says he plugs it in and it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't charge the battery. So we'll see what the connector's doing. And we can check the battery, see if it holds a charge, and we can do all that. So let's take a look at it. Glare here. Uh, let's see. Like I said, I'm gonna, just gonna plug the power in. This does have power, and uh, I can verify that. I'm plugging it into another phone. Power's up. Okay. So this, I'm not getting any indication lights or anything that I would expect to see around the, the, the bevel here. And say this top connector here, like I said, we're missing the buttons, but I can hit the, the tactile switch here. And I'll just press that down. I don't know if this has to be pressed down for like, five seconds or something before it turns on but I would expect to see some sort of indicator light uh, saying that uh, that it's charging I'm not seeing that I'm gonna take my spudger and uh, just go around the bevel the perimeter of the uh, the case this certainly feels like it's been opened before We're dealing with one, two, three, four screws so far. There might be one under here, I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it. And uh, we can remove the main board after removing some, uh, the ribbon cables. And uh, we'll see about removing the, uh, the SMD micro USB connector. So let's do that now. wireless antenna here it goes under here I'm going to speaker uh, this should be the digitizer here this goes to the LCD or the LED I'm not sure which one this is uh, let's see there's a uh, one, two, three, four, five screws that hold the uh, the main board in place, and uh, here's our culprit right here so far. This is our micro USB connector. See that? I don't know if we'll be able to get in there to see. Hold on. Yeah, it looks a little banged up. That's for sure. It's really loose. The connector's really, really loose. So, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Um, let's see, to get to the main board, you want to... Uh, let's see if we can get some better lighting here. Uh, let's 
Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's better. We'll get the uh, the digitizer off. It's these uh, white tabs here. They just pop right up. And gently rock it back and forth, and that will come undone. Okay. I've already taken the screws out. And uh, this here goes to our power and our volume. There's a tab right here. That can be nicely removed. You don't want to put a lot of tension on that at all because you damage one of these ribbon cables, it's it's a, it's over. You gotta buy a new one. There's no way around it. Uh, this tab here is also the white tab. Just flip it up. The LCD you want to be real careful of. There we go. You really don't want to over bend it either. Uh, let's see. We have a, uh, a speaker connector here. That goes down here to the speaker here. This just pops right up. Like so. Pop that out. And the same for the power for the battery. They just pop right up. All right. Let's see if we can get in there. Just like so. Did you see that? And they just push right back now. Excuse the dirty fingernails. I know my sister gave me a hard time about that the other day. And I said, well, I work for a living. So, um, there's also a connector back here. And I accidentally ripped that out. And luckily it, it pulled out. I just did that just now. This is going to be probably the hardest part of getting the whole mechanism back together. Because if we can see here how short that cable is. And it's got to go right to where that connector, that white connector is. And the only way to do it is to get right in there. I mean, this is how much... There's no finger room in there at all. I don't care how small your fingers are. You're not getting your fingers in there. So you have to have um, some pretty good dexterity and uh, some really good tweezers that can get in there and help align that. That's going to be the hardest part of reassembling this whole thing. So uh, if you don't have a long set of tweezers, I mean, even this is borderline too short for me. Uh, maybe if you have some... Uh, some nice baby hemostats or something like this, something a little smaller. Uh, that would work as well. But uh, but yeah, if there's if there's going to be a problem, uh, that would be the one thing you would worry about. Uh, that's going to be your biggest obstacle of this whole project. Uh, so don't dismantle your your mother your main board. Unless you're prepared to deal with that problem. Alright. Alright. So. Here's our. Uh, our micro USB. You want to note the footprint. It does go through the board. So it is a uh, it's a partial through hole and it's a combination through hole and surface mount. As you can see here, there are holes there. So uh, what I typically use to remove components like this is I use um, rather than using a heat gun that can uh, uh, accidentally reflow and you know if you knock the knock the board, you could lose half your components in one fell swoop and you'll never f figure out where the hell they go never happens so I like to use what's called Cerebin and uh, this is called wedge metal and uh, it's a low temperature melting alloy uh, it says cadmium bismuth uh, lead yeah but I think what the first thing I'll do is verify that I have this actual component. And uh, because I have a number of these different types and they have like, there's 
there's about a dozen different types of micro USB connectors. And there's all different footprints and uh, different manufacturers and, and whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting the connector back on, but what we're going to do now is we're going to try powering up the board and bypassing the battery. Actually, what we'll do is we'll test the battery first. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's skip testing the battery and just check the main board and see if the uh, the displays line up or fire up and all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect these cables, the the flux cables, and get these back in there. Just like so. So there's one. Get the digitizer back on there. And there we go. That's one and two. I guess I could throw the speaker back on. Why not? Since I'm there. Yeah, and it just pushes right back on. And the last connector is the uh, the display. I know I haven't showed you a whole much, and you're probably going, what the hell am I watching here? But uh, stay tuned. We'll actually do something. We'll actually do something that's real. All right? I'm just showing you the motions. And I wanted to show you uh, that you don't want to just start ripping cables up without knowing what's underneath the main board because you're going to want to have that camera working when you're done with this, right? So keep that in mind. When I turn my power supply on, I'm going to want 4 volts. I'm adjusting the current, and I'm just going to go a little bit. Now I have uh, that voltage is coming out of the power supply out of here, and that way I can use my test leads as the power source. All right. So following the indications uh, located on the battery here, we have positive on this side and negative on this side. Yeah. So I'm going to practice that on these terminals here. I'm going to put positive on this lead here, right here, and I'm going to put negative on this lead here. And I'm working through the camera, so, alright. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press and hold the power button here, and we're going to keep an eye on the uh, on the display, and I'll reset up the camera for that. I really want to see the thing fire up. Well, 130 milliamps, 115, and we're going into overcurrent, which means we don't have enough. Let's turn it up. Hey, we might be able to get this thing going. Hey, look at that. We have a broken screen. Ah, did you see it? The screen is certainly damaged. I saw the whole screen. It's all shattered. I'm going to press and hold this button here. Pressing and holding. And there we go. So it looks like, hey, you know what? Yeah, there's definitely some cracks in the board.
you can see that there's some cracks at the very bottom and I just look yeah that screen is definitely broke the LCD it looks like I don't think it's a digitizer because the main glass here isn't broken at all it looks like it's the actual LCD or the LED or I don't know what type of display it is I gotta pull the model number off the uh, off the board but uh well that's jeez that's not good uh -oh. oh I'm glad I didn't do any more work to it and I'm glad I didn't spend any time ripping that uh micro USB connector off because I would have wasted my time doing that because uh it's 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 more money than the it's more money than it's worth so yeah I think that's a no go uh, it wouldn't matter if the damn thing charges or not you can't use it so the display is more important than the uh, than the connector. I'll uh, I'll let my buddy know about that. But uh, yeah, I don't think it'll happen. I don't think he's gonna go for it. So yeah, valuable lesson right there. Uh, just because you're hired to do one thing doesn't mean you shouldn't check other things. Uh, because you said don't don't do the job if it's more than it's going to be more than twenty dollars, and uh, that would have been more than twenty. The connector would have been a piece of cake, and I would have done all that work for nothing. You know, can't do that. Nobody's happy there. Nobody wins. What am I going to do? I'm going to charge twenty dollars for a connector that he can't use? Can't do that. It's bad business. So. Yeah, unfortunately nobody wins this one. Uh, if it does go through with the LCD, I'll certainly make a video on that. Absolutely. Um, to do that, you need a heat gun. You need a temperature controlled heat gun. Uh, you don't want to use these things. That I've seen a lot of, I've seen a couple videos and everybody's got the, the you know, the heat gun for, for uh, removing paint off your walls and your wood. Off of furniture and stuff. Don't use that. That's just stupid. Now, use the right tool. Have the skill set to use that tool. And, uh, yeah, don't cut corners. Don't do that. Have the right equipment or don't do the job. You know, you're going to do half-assed work. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. Uh, no, you got to use a temperature-controlled iron, temperature-controlled everything. It's... it's it's not worth because you don't. You, there's too many pitfalls. You may not notice issues with it later on, or right away, but they'll catch up with you. And it's a shabby job because it's not consistent. You know, you might get lucky once or twice, but you know, it's not worth it. Use the right tool, have the skill set for that tool, and have the the, the knowledge to how to use that stuff. Uh, it's really important. Uh, the next time we have to do a, uh, a display change, I'll certainly go through all the motions of that. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, this one's a flop. So sorry. Uh, I was really hoping to show you something cool today. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> guess that's that. All right. Well, valuable lesson there because I just saved myself. I saved myself work that I didn't have to do. Unfortunately, you know, but I'm glad I did that because I don't like unbillable hours or unbillable work that I can't charge for, and nobody wins. So there's a valuable lesson there. That sucks. It sucks for everybody. All right. Well, good night, ladies and germs. Take care.